Hello, YouTube. <laughs> okay. I started a stream, but forgot to push the button, so it was not working. All right. So it should be it should be working out. Everything should be working now. So let me let me start over then. Hi, my name is Jem Uxel. Yeah, it's uh, written like this, and I'm going to be. Uh, teaching this course, Interactive Computer Graphics. Today, I'm going to talk a, a little bit about this course, what it is all about. So if you haven't taken any graphics course in the past, um, well, this is going to be a pretty speedy introduction to it. <laughs> if you have taken a graphics course in the past, for example, if you've taken uh, Introduction to Computer Graphics, you should be, you should be ready to go, but we'll, we'll do um, a background overview anyway. So yeah, this, is, this course is a specialized course. This is not an introduction to graphics course. This is interactive computer graphics course. It's something very, very specific. So we're going to cover a very specific topic within computer graphics in this course. And that topic is going to be, and that topic is going to be rendering on the GPU. So interactive computer graphics is a, it, it's a, it's the, the appropriate title for this course, but it's a little bit misleading because well, what exactly we're doing is in this course is rendering on the GPU. Because this is what makes interactive graphics possible. Now, what, what do we use graphics for? We use graphics for maybe special effects in, in, in movies. That's not interactive. For interactive stuff, we can use it for visual reality, we could use it for video games, we could use it for, how about our uh, mobile phones, right? So everything that you see on the screen, that's, that's generated using interactive computer graphics. Um, and it's all made possible by this thing, by the GPU. Well, this is a desktop graphics card, should be installed inside your computer. But, you know, you have a GPU on pretty much any any device that has a visual interface, right? So we have a GPU on your laptops. Sometimes it's an integrated GPU. It's not separated like this, like it's a separate graphics card. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's integrated. It's um, on the same motherboard using the same uh, memory that your system CPU is using, uh, but the GPU exists. Uh, same goes for uh, your cell phones. It, they, they do have GPUs as well. And, and this, our ability to render images, our ability to, to quickly generate images is made possible by the existence of this hardware. And this is how we can have interactive graphics. So when we talk about interactive graphics, the, the main core of this course is going to be about, about this thing that is rendering on the GPU that makes interactive graphics possible for us. So this is what this course is going to cover mostly. Now, if you have taken Introduction to Computer Graphics, this topic is covered just a little bit. In this course, we're going to dive quite a bit deeper. Now, you're going to see that I'm going to keep referencing Introduction to Computer Graphics quite a bit because there's going to be some overlap. Uh, we're going to cover some of the stuff that we talked about in that course, uh, but we're going to go much further. We're going to explore topics that's related to rendering on the GPU uh, much deeper in this course. Yeah, th this is what this course is about. If you're not interested in this, you're, you are in the wrong course. <laughs> in the first half of this course, we're going to do projects together. We will all do the same project. There are going to be eight projects, um, and I'm going to tell you how to do these projects. And in the second half of this course, you all will be working on your own final project. The final project is going to be different for everyone. The graphics API that we will be using. Now, I'm saying OpenGL. Use OpenGL. I, I thought about this a lot, actually. OpenGL, this, this very, very old library uh, graphics API that's been around for quite some time now and uh, updated over the years many, many times most of the time with backwards compatibility and um, more recently without backwards compatibility. It's, it's been around for so, so long and it supports um, almost all of the latest features of GPUs, but at least the, the latest features of uh, some latest GPUs are not included in OpenGL, which is really rare. It didn't happen in the past. So that indicates that maybe people are uh, navigating towards different graphics APIs. Uh, that's why I 
struggle with this decision. Should I still teach OpenGL and, and talk about something else? And I decided to, to stick with OpenGL. And there's a reason for that. Because it's, OpenGL is a graphics API that's platform independent, that works on any operating system. And it's been around for, for quite some time and supports uh, really advanced features of our graphics cards too. And, and it's C++, it's uh, highly efficient. It allows you to uh, generate highly efficient interactive graphics applications. So OpenGL is still and probably will be very, very relevant and useful graphics API that you should know. Right? Uh, but I am open to other alternatives if you want to use other alternatives. For example, if you say, you know what, um, I don't want to use OpenGL. I'd rather spend my time to learn DirectX and Direct3D and uh, use this Microsoft a a Graphics API for uh, my projects. That's also fine. I'm going to allow that as well. That's okay. Of course, your code has to be Windows, has to run on Windows, which is fine. So if you want to use DirectX instead of OpenGL, that's perfectly fine. You can do that. But I am going to provide support for OpenGL. I am not going to provide direct support for DirectX. So you're somewhat on your own if you're using DirectX. But with that caveat, that, that's okay. That's perfectly okay to use DirectX if you want to. I actually thought about whether or not this course should be DirectX, but I decided not to because that's Windows only. I don't have a problem with that, but some people might, so I don't want to enforce, like if you guys are not familiar with or don't want to use Windows, that's, that's fine, you don't have to. Th that's the reason why I didn't pick DirectX as the, the core API that we'll, co we'll be covering, but if you want to use DirectX, that's perfectly fine. Please do that. Uh, just know that you're going to have to figure things out on your own. Uh, on the other hand, these are graphics APIs for controlling the same GPU in the same way. <laughs> so you're going to see that these two APIs are remarkably similar. They're not wildly different, completely different things. They're actually very, very, very similar. The, the concepts are very similar. So the stuff that we're going to talk about in the context of OpenGL will probably directly apply to DirectX. It's just that the function calls, the function names are going to be different because it's a different API, right? Maybe there are going to be a few minor differences in the way that you set things up. But other than that, most of the things will be very, very parallel. So you could definitely use DirectX if you want to. How about you say another graphics API that is Vulkan? That's a newer graphics API. You know, the same people who supported OpenGL for decades are supporting Vulkan now. So why don't we use Vulkan? Yes, you can. You Definitely, uh, absolutely. If you want to use Vulkan, that's that's fine. You can you can do that. That's that's perfectly fine. But the reason why I didn't choose this as I as our primary graphics API is that Vulkan by design is much more difficult to use than than OpenGL because it's it's a lower level language than or lower level API, not language API than than OpenGL. A lot of things that in OpenGL that require you to write one or two lines of code would be <laughs> quite a bit more lines of code in, in Vulkan. It's going to be a lot harder to, to use. But this allows you to sort of customize exactly what it is that you're doing so you can squeeze a bit more performance out of your GPU. And that's why this, this API exists. A, a lot of people are gravitating towards Vulkan because of that, So because you can squeeze just a bit more performance out of your GPUs as compared to OpenGL when you're doing something very specific. But you know, whether or not you can actually squeeze any performance, any more performance out of your GPU, it really depends on what exactly it is that you're doing. Oftentimes you'll see that OpenGL versus Vulkan, the performance will be identical. But sometimes Vulkan might give you a bit more performance, right? It's a lower level API, and, and for that reason, it seems to be preferred today by many people. But also it's a lot harder to do anything with Vulkan, a lot harder. And that's the reason why I didn't want to pick this as our primary graphics API. Because for a lot of things that you're going to be doing after taking this course, I think OpenGL will be more than sufficient uh, for you. So, um, so I think that this is good. And also I think that if you want to switch to Vulkan at some point, 
uh, your knowledge of OpenGL will be very, very helpful for that switch. So you shouldn't worry about not diving into Vulkan right away uh, and learning OpenGL first, if, if that's the case. So that, that's why I'm picking OpenGL over Vulkan. So, but if you want to use Vulkan, that's totally fine. Again, you will be on your own. Yeah, I, I will be providing, we will be providing support for OpenGL. Uh, well, there's another alternative. Some of you might know that there's another API. It's called Metal for Mac. Yeah, so that's the Mac version of Vulkan. Uh, for whatever reason, Apple decided to have their own graphics API. I don't quite understand this, but you know, nobody, nobody from Apple explained it to me. Maybe that's why I don't understand it. <laughs> so anyhow, so it's it's there. If you want to use Metal. That, that's fine. You, 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 you can do that as well. My guess is that probably it's going to be as difficult to use as Vulkan. Also, it only runs on Macs. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> if you want to do that, that's, that's up to you. That's, that's going to be perfectly fine if you want to do that. Oh, there's questions on the YouTube stream asking if they can submit projects to me. Uh, <laughs> I can stop anyone from submitting projects to me, but I'm not going to look at them if that's what you're asking. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, uh, my, my job here is to, to look at the projects submitted by the students who are registered for this course, and that's what I'm going to do. Now, as a courtesy, I'm making these lectures available publicly online, but you know, that's the, uh, the extent of the time commitment I can, I can have. <laughs> but, you know, Evaluating project submissions all over the world? No, I'm not signing up for that. Sorry. I, I don't think I can do that. This is the course-related stuff that I wanted to, to cover. The, the lectures are going to be very different in the beginning of this course. In the first half, we're going to be talking about stuff that's going to be directly related to the projects that you will be implementing. In the second half of this course, I, I will be talking about advanced stuff. We're going to talk about all sorts of advanced uh, interactive computer graphics techniques. And uh, your final projects may or may not be related to them. But I would like you all to be exposed to all sorts of different advanced interactive computer graphics techniques as, as students taking this course. The, the second half of this course is going to be very much like me casually talking about some uh, advanced, really advanced interactive computer graphics topics. Uh, that may or may not be related to your projects. Okay, so I'll end it here. <laughs> Thank you for the nice comments. All right, uh, bye for now.